Welcome to the Win Make Give podcast. Chad Himes here, joined by my partner in crime, Bob Stewart. Bob, how have you been? Chad, I feel like it's been a minute. I feel like it's been a minute, but I've been good. I've been good, but it has been a little while. It has been, folks. Audience, we love having you out there, right? We know it's been a little while since we've dropped some episodes, and we are going to be coming full steam, Bob, as we are now in Win Make Give season three. Wow, season like three, some- Chad. We had, what, 100 episodes in season one, 100 and some odd in season two. We're kicking off season three. What are we? Generally, we, we tend to have kind of a, a theme or a focus or some kind of a thread that runs through the season. Do we have one of those for season three? Absolutely, we do, Bob. Season one was just win, make, give, health, wealth, leadership, and legacy. That's what we just covered in season one to get everybody comfortable with the concept. Season two, Bob, we came back and we hit on two of those words, right? We hit on winning in season two and we were given. That's right. We were donating money off every episode when we were uh, recording them. We were sending off donations to charities that you, our audience, picked. Bob, there's only one word left for season three. You know what that's got to be in the win make make, title, right? What are we going to make? We're going to make what? Here's what we're going to be doing in season three, folks. We're going to be finding out, talking to, and showing you how you can make a difference. Okay. How can you make an impact? And Bob, I think the one nearest and dearest to Ben's heart would be, how do we make more money? You, you know, I, I, I would tend to agree, but, but I think there's a reason for that, Chad, right? Because uh, Ben uh, believes uh, that we can make a difference or more of a difference and we can make more of an impact if, we've, you know, if we're financially in a position to do that. Now, it's not the only way we can make a difference or the only way we can make an impact, but it definitely gives us you know, a, little bit, a little bit more to work with. Right. Absolutely. And I think that's always been Ben's message when we talk about it and all of that stuff. And Bob, that's why part of season three, I'm going to put it out there. I know we've been teasing it. I'm going to put it out there. Part of season three is going to be the new, updated, revised 2.0 version of the wealth series brought to you by Ben Kinney. You know what's awesome, Chad? In these last these few months, you know, we've we've taken a break from when season two ended and and we're back now, but how many, how many times during those couple months has somebody reached out to you or to me or to Ben? Yeah. We just had one this morning, right? Yep. Who said, you know what? I'm teaching the wind make, or I'm teaching the wealth series to a group of people in my office with, with some of my friends are coming, some of my colleagues are doing it. Would one of you guys show up? Chad, I know you've shown up to a couple of groups. I've yep. showed up to a couple of groups, people who took our wealth series and they're turning around and sharing it with their friends and family. So we're excited to update it. You know, bring it into 2022 since we, when did we make that thing? Back in 2020? 2020. 2020. 2020. 2020. It's been out there. It's helped. And we've had tens of thousands of people listen to it, take it, download the the workbooks and all that stuff. And yeah, we're looking forward to updating that. It'll it'll be exciting. You know, Bob, not only that, we're going to update it for you. We're going to take you through it. We're going to expand it. We're looking at about 12 sessions instead of the eight sessions it was last time. And, and Bob, we're going to be offering in person, a certified wealth series trainer program. That's right. You're going to get to come join us and learn from Bob and myself and Ben Kinney how you can be bringing and presenting and earn the certification so you can teach the wealth series to your world. Bob, that'll help us make more money, which is Ben's driving point. And like you said, by making more money, we are able to then make a difference and continue to make an impact. So on this it's episode, what's, what should we do? Should we dive into what it means to make a difference? Uh, Bob, make a difference, okay? That's where we're going to focus. That's what we got to start on today. We're going to be bringing you some company profiles of companies that have made a difference. We're going to be bringing you interviews of people who are making a difference. What I want people to understand, make an impact, make a difference. They're kind of the same thing as we were doing our research on it, sure. right? One word kind of means the same as another. Bob, we like to grab those dictionary definitions, kind of start us on our way. Give me the definition that came up for the phrase, make a difference. That that would be to have a significant effect on a person or a situation. Okay, so that's making an impact. That's making a difference. Bob, I want you to take the easy answers off the board. I'm going to take the easy answers away from you. So you can't say mom, you can't say your wife, you can't say your kids. Heck, we can't even say Ben Kinney in this case. 
which by Tell- the way, all have had a, you know, have made a difference in my life. Right. My, my mom, obviously I was raised by a single mom. My kids, I think yep. were really kind of the realized I'm actually an adult now. And when you have kids, you're responsible for somebody else that changes your life and <laughs> makes a massive difference. Right. So yeah, those are, those are the obvious ones. We'll take them off the board. What's your question? And once they're gone. There you go. Once you take all those easy ones off the board, tell me someone who's made an impact on you or made a difference in your life. I think I've shared this on the wind on the podcast before. And if I haven't, I mean, look, I, I have a number of, of individuals, a number of great mentors. Jonathan Washburn was one of my first kind of partners in business and was somebody that turned me on to the idea of entrepreneurship. And, um, but I, this, this is a really easy one for me. And I almost get, I'm probably, I might get a little bit emotional here, Chad, but it's, it was my fifth and sixth grade teacher. Uh, her name was Mrs. Robinson. And we, you know, when I showed up in her classroom as a, as a, what a 10 year old fifth grader, my parents were recently divorced. I was raised in a house with domestic violence. I, I, I was ripe to go the wrong direction, I think. And this lady, you know, she took me under her wing. She uh, showed me attention that I'd never had in a positive manner. She was a, you know, a, a reinforcing factor in my life. She, she let me do, Chad, you know, we joke about me being good at math, but in fifth grade, I was good at math. I was way better at math than the, the fifth grade math book. She like brought me into the classroom, my own math book from seventh grade. And I, I worked on a different math book than the rest of the kids did. But she just, I think this is what gets me a little bit choked up. More than anything, she, as a 10 year old kid that was coming out of a really bad situation, she gave me a voice. She made me feel like my voice mattered and, and that and there was somebody that cared. And so the funny thing is, Chad, you know, I tried to find her about five years ago. And in my head, like as a 10 year old, she was an old lady, right? I don't know. She was probably her. only 50, though, or something in her 50s. And, um, and I'm getting close to that. And you just hit that, right? So she wasn't really an old lady, but. Um, <laughs> But she's 90 now. She's just about to turn 90. In fact, she turned 90 last October. And so about two years ago, I reached out to her son. I found her son on the internet, Tom Robinson. Uh, He was a basketball player at the University of Washington. He's a teacher now, funny enough, right? And I said, hey, Tom, you you probably have no idea who I am. Your mom taught me in fifth and sixth grade. And I'm looking to try to get a hold of her. And and he gave me her email address. And I reached out. And I had a a couple of emails back and forth there just letting her know, like, she had a major impact on my life, you know, and, um, and I wanted her to know that, but about, about six or eight months ago, one of her other sons reached out to me and said, Hey, we're doing a, a, we weren't able to do a party for mom for her 90th birthday. Right. So we're doing this memorial book for her where we're reaching out to people. And, you know, and my brother said that you might have a good story to tell about mom. And so I got to write this, this story about what she meant to me and the impact and the difference that she made on my life. And it was included in the book that her family gave her for her 90th birthday back in October. So it's a really easy one for me. It's Mrs. Robinson. I swear to you guys, I would not be sitting in this chair today if it wasn't for her. I'd I'd probably be dead or in jail or something like it was a pivotal time that she intersected in my life. Wow. Yeah. Chad. Right. Mrs. Robinson, I I don't know whether to say thank you. I mean, I'm glad Bob's not in jail or dead. I but the fact that he's sitting (laughs) in his chair across from me me now because of it, right? I I might have to blame you for that one, (laughs) Mrs. Robinson, if you're a listener. Uh, Bob, that's awesome, right? And mine's also a a professor that I had first year college for me. Uh, You know, we enter college, we think we know everything. We're going into that new life. Um, You got you got the freedom, right? You got no no boundaries, no parents, no. Yeah, oh boy, was that a problem for me. <laughs> I, and he really made me look at things in a very, very different way that today still is the way I look at things, right? He, people always talk about, you know, the world doesn't revolve around you. And I remember clearly uh, Fred saying, the world literally does revolve around you. Because if you're not here, Bob, does it matter to you what's really going on any longer? Mm. Right? And, and he had us just changing our our mindset on, on certain things. And, you know, he would he, just so many different things that he made me change the way I looked at. And, and much to my mother's dismay, as mom's probably listening to this episode, Fred's the one who sat me down and said to me, are you going to be a teacher? And I said, no. He said, well, then you do not need a degree to do what you're doing in the entertainment industry. It was in theater. He said, you're better off dropping out and getting a job because they're five years we're five years behind everything. You could go get paid instead of paying us to be behind. And uh, much to mom's dismay, I dropped out of college <laughs> and never went back. So 
Folks, we know there's somebody in your life that has made a difference and made an impact. And I'm going to bet from listening to Bob's story, I can't do this with Fred Turry, who was my professor. He's passed. Uh, Yet I'm going to bet if we sat and talked with Mrs. Robinson, just getting those emails from you, what that probably meant to her. So folks, if you know who that person is and you can still track them down, maybe they're still in your life. Maybe they were someone who came through your world. What a powerful thing you could do to send a message letting somebody know how much you impacted or they made a difference in your world. Now, Bob, Chad, I, have a, I have another, do you mind? Like they're, they're, no. to, to your point here of like letting people know how much they impacted and really what that can do for somebody. Um, and I might've told this story before, but there was a guy that came up to Ben Kinney and I, we used to do this thing called rain camp back in 2009. We ran around the country. We taught Ben's business and, uh, and we've been teaching it online, right? We're, active rain and these things. And we've been showcasing kind of how to be a better real estate agent. That was Ben's business back in those days. And um, a guy came up to us after the, the, the rain camp in Houston, Texas, the guy's name's Greg Nino. And he said, Hey guys, I, I want to thank you. You know, you know, the, the stuff you guys have been teaching me has really been helping my, my business and, and my life. And you know, when Chad, you've been at these things. There's lots of people saying, thank you. And we're just like, yeah, great, awesome. No problem. And, he grabbed me by the shoulders. <laughs> like it was one of those like, yeah, Greg, God, you bet, man. Like we love doing this. And he like, he was like, no, you're not going to give me some fake answer. He grabbed me by the shoulders and he kind of looked right in my eye and he goes, Hey, I'm serious. Like the stuff that I'm learning from you guys is putting food on the table for my kids. And look, I was, that, that was in 2009. I don't know how old I was 31 or something. Like I didn't have a whole lot of awareness of like the impact we were having. But yep. when he said that to me, to this day, like it sends shivers up my spine. It, he's fueled me, Chad, for the, the last, however long it's been, 13 years. I'm fueled by Greg grabbing me by the shoulders and, and letting me know that like the impact we were having was actually putting food on the table for his kids. Like it, it shook me to my core. And so, yeah, reach out to people like that, that difference they made in your life, you letting them know that could be the fuel they need to go make a difference in three other people's lives. Yeah, absolutely, Bob. I just had a very, very similar experience not too long ago. I was out teaching the workshop that goes along with the book that I put out. And uh, one of the ladies in the room stopped at one point. I was asking some questions. She volunteered and she said she's married today only because of a class I gave three years ago before that, because I taught her a lesson that the relationship she was in was failing. She walked out of that class that day and applied what I had talked about in her personal world when she got home and they had gotten married literally the weekend before this class. She said, I know we're supposed to leave on our honeymoon, but Chad's coming to town and I want to go be there. Who knows what we awesome. learned this time? I mean, look, we're, we're, Chad, you and I are both in a very fortunate position to be able to share many of the lessons that we've learned with, with a large audience. So Yep. Um, you know, it feels good, right? To, to kind of have somebody circle back and say, Hey, that thing that you talked about, like it actually made a difference in my life. And I think all of our listeners have somebody that they could do that with and, and really, you know, not just change. I, mean, I don't think it's just making that person feel good for the day. It's letting them know that you had an impact that fuels them to go make more of an impact. Chad, you have that lady yeah. telling you that makes you want to go out there and teach that lesson to five more people, right? Correct. Now, Bob, let me put you on the spot again. And I, again, I, I love doing this stuff. We don't warn each other as we're getting into it. Give me someone who you don't know who's made an impact on you. I'll give you mine just to give you a second to think. I, I never got the pleasure of meeting Jackie Robinson. I have had the pleasure of speaking with his wife because I did a massive report on him uh, and tracked her down for it. Yet Jackie Robinson made a huge impact and a huge difference in my life by teaching me courage, uh, by teaching me not to judge people. Uh, I grew up and, and my dad was a Dodgers fan. So that's probably how I got the introduction to Jackie Robinson, of course. And then reading about him and learning about him, I never even met the man. And he had a huge impact in my life. Is there somebody who, maybe celebrity status, we all remember Barkley saying, hey, we're not role models. We shouldn't be role models to your kid. But is there somebody who you don't know that made an impact or a difference like that. Too. Sometimes, Chad, sometimes you, we like in the podcast itself, we act like, like the set, it wasn't a setup, right? This is actually a setup. You just set me up here. You didn't tell me there's nowhere on the slides that we work from. Is there this nope. question? Um, man, I, I, you know, I look, I think immediately my brain goes back to my childhood and, you know, being raised in a, 
in a house where I just saw things that kids shouldn't see, you know, I try to think of like, what was my solace in those times? And so I, it's probably somewhere in the sports world, but not for like a great reason other than they made a difference in my life, allowing me to escape to that place. Right. So like when, when I was growing up, my favorite players were George Brett played third base for the Kansas city Royals, Marcus yes, he Allen. He was a running back for the Los Angeles Raiders and magic Johnson point guard for the LA Lakers. Right. Like those were my guys. Um, not cause they're great guys. I'm a, I'm a 10 year old. I'm an eight year old kid. Right. I'm just, they gave me an escape, right? They made a difference in my life because when my parents were fighting in the house, I could go outside and act like I was Marcus Allen making shifty running back moves out, you know, in my yard. Right. Or I could go shoot some baskets and, and try to get that stuff that was happening in my family out of my head. So like, I guess those, those athletes of my youth that were an escape for me that like, I love those guys to this day. I, they're not actually up here anymore. I used to have these figurines, one of each three of those figurines. They have some meaning to me, right? These people that, like Jackie Robinson, we don't know them. But for me, it was this idea that, like, man, I could play sports as an escape. And I think I used that, like, all through my, you know, my childhood anyway, right, as a place to go escape to because I, I watched these guys doing something fun as an adult. Mm. All right, folks. So we challenge you. Think about who those people are. If there's someone you can reach out to, please do, all right? Because you might now make a difference or make an impact upon them the way they made it on you. I, John, I Bob, think I know we love- anything, well, I think as much as like just, just that they made an impact, it's like, why did they make an impact on you? Oh, right? like sure. When I think about Mrs. Robinson, for me, it's very clear. It's taken me years to understand that impact, right? But today, through a bunch of therapy, it's very clear that like she gave me a voice, right? And like that was her huge impact was to give me a voice. And so I turn around, I think like, where, who can I give a voice to? Right. Mm. What, what, what young kid in in my son's circle looks like they need a voice. Right. Or so I I think as much as anything, you guys understand what, what it was it about that person that made an impact. Right. Because generally you can make that same impact and it had an impact on you for a particular reason. Yeah. You know, one of the things I love about doing this podcast with you, Bob is, and not just this episode, is that we get the opportunity to get passionate. We get the opportunity to share those things and we get the opportunity to be authentic. We really hope that you, our audience, are feeling this. We're we're not sitting here and saying, Bob, I'm going to ask you this question. So, you know, prepare for the answer. We're having these authentic conversations because we want you to have them with yourself. And of course, if you need someone to talk to, maybe we can be the person that gives you that voice as well as Bob is saying, don't ever hesitate to reach out to us. Join us in our Facebook group, actually, Win May Give, so that you have a way to connect with us if you haven't so far. Bob, I wanna talk about some statistics. I wanna talk about some numbers. I'm not a high C personality, yet I love them. Uh, and then let's talk a little bit more about making a difference or making an impact. So a lot of people want to make a difference, right? Yeah. I, mean, I don't know anybody who says, ah, I don't wanna make a difference. I don't wanna be you know, impactful in the world. Yet a lot of people think the easiest way to do it is just to donate money. You know, it, I did a little research and found talkaboutgiving.org. What they've shown is that a person who earns $20,000 a year or less actually gives twice as much money as someone who earns $100,000 per year. Is that like as a percentage of their income or something? Or like straight up, I, I would guess it would be like as a percentage of their income, right? Because if I give like fifty dollars and I make twenty thousand, the person making a hundred thousand would have to give two hundred and fifty dollars. Like that would be my guess, right? But look, that's insane to me. Like that's crazy, right? Like right. and it. The people that, who need it the most are the ones that are willing to give it, and those who have the opportunity to give because of how much they're able to make are not the ones who always do when the numbers come to it. And what and was the, the wealthiest, other, yeah, the wealthiest, yeah, the wealthiest 10% yeah. give how much? 25% of all charitable giving. The wealthiest yeah. 10% of the country are only a quarter of all the giving that's out yeah, there. I think that but, wealthiest 10% is sitting on about 75% of the wealth, by the way, in, in the country. So like does that top, the, you know, the, the massive majority of the wealth is not responsible for most of the giving. That, you know... It, I, I, there's some positive in here, Chad, and there's obviously some things that, like, I think as a, you know, as a as a community, we'd love to see like different. Like the positive though is like, look, 
we are when we don't have much like as a as a society we're actually willing to give right yeah. maybe we're closer connected to that idea of like man if somebody gave me 50 bucks like that'd make a massive impact on my life and so it's easier for me to to give right when i can see like what that impact would have on me given the fact that maybe i don't have as many means I don't know, that's be. a positive thing i think for me or so it's at yep. least a, I, something to build on it is absolutely something to build on and we talked back in season two about ways to give don't always have to be money right so there are other ways to give we did an episode on that episode 10 actually in season two where we talked with ben about you know winning through giving and the five ways to give other than money. So you had brought uh, up, I was fascinated by this, this next kind of stat, right? Is yeah. this idea from a study back in 2012 where, re, and, and other studies have reinforced this since this first, co this concept was kind of discovered, but where researchers found that upon reflecting on ways that one had helped another, just reflecting, just thinking about those ways, Chad, it yeah. actually motivated them to want to go out and help more people, right? Yeah. So helping others is, like addicting or something right like we enjoy yes. it and so if we think about it more and, and we kind of conjure up that feeling that it gave us right it makes us want to go out and actually do it more what's the good news out of that then there's some well, good news there there's there's always good news right that if you're addicted to it right first of all that's a good thing and two by making that difference or impact in others you're actually making one in yourself Right? You're making yourself feel better and feel happier every day just by giving or making an impact, making a difference in some way. So, Bob, if you want to feel better, go give to someone else. Right? Ben always used to say to us that if you want to get out of your own head and get away from your own stress and get away from your own drama and worries, go give to someone else. Go serve somebody else because you'll be thinking about them while you're doing it and you'll stop thinking about yourself. So, Bob, I, as we were building this episode and we wanted to talk about making a difference and making an impact, uh, I kind of challenged us to come up with the four different areas that we could discuss, right? So making a difference in our lives. So cool. let, let's start there and then we'll go from there. But I, I started in, right, making a difference in our lives, then making a difference in our families, then making a difference in our community, and then making a difference, you know, in our business so that we were kind of growing it out through all the things. Because here at Win, Make, Give, it's not just about making a difference, not just about making an impact. It's about making more money because that allows us to make more of a difference and make more of an impact. So, Bob, when I say to you, let's make a difference in our own lives, what could that look like? What are some of the things that come to mind for Bob that we could be doing? I mean, look, <laughs> let's just be honest. Chad, you recently ran in one day or was it in two days? Two days, yeah. In over two days, you ran three different Spartan races, which yes. is insane. To run one Spartan race is insane. You ran three <laughs> in two days. Um, so health, exercise, like those yeah. I think are one of the first places we could go to to start to make a difference in my own life. We have a whole podcast. Uh, it's called The 15-Point Plan. It's hosted by you and our friend Jalene. Uh, yep. That's all about how we can make, you know, have more energy, be more healthy, and, and really have, at the end of the day, more energy to go out and make more of a difference or make more of an impact. So I think the first thing we can do is we can exercise a little bit, Chad, even if that means getting out and, and man, it's sunny out here in Washington State today, which isn't very often, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe it's getting out and taking a walk, right? Maybe it's, it's grabbing the kids after, after school and, and, you know, running up to the park and actually playing with them versus sitting on the, on the deal with your head you know, buried in your phone. Yeah. Exercise would be a great one. What, what do you got? Well, I, a long exercise. I'll just keep going right into that, Bob, because I think our health is the foundation. I really do. I believe that, you know, if we don't have health, we can't do so many of these other things. I, I drink more water, right? Wow. I mean, I, I'm very proud and I'll, I'll just say it out here. I'm proud of Ben. He's finally decided to give up drinking Diet Coke that he would drink all the time, like it was going out of style or something like that and he's been drinking water. That simple action of rehydrating your body and not putting other things into it is gonna make a huge difference, one, in your appearance for yourself if you wanna make a difference or an impact because your skin's gonna look better, and two, just in your natural health because it's gonna flush out the stuff that shouldn't be in your system. So, Bob, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just challenge, I'm gonna, you give me one, I'm gonna come right okay. back. And All right, I'm going next, right. I'm going next. I wanna make a difference in myself, Chad. Yep. I see a therapist. I do it every yes, Tuesday. Too. At five o'clock, I don't think that everybody needs to see a therapist. Maybe you journal, yep. right? 
Maybe you meditate. Um, all three of those things have one thing in common, Chad, that I'm, I'm, I'm analyzing my thoughts, right? I'm, I'm, I'm getting into my own head and I'm, I'm can comfortably sit, sometimes uncomfortably <laughs> sit with those <laughs> thoughts and, and do something with them. And I really believe this like to my core today. And I wouldn't have believed this, let's say five years ago necessarily, but I believe to my core today, if you're not doing one of these three things, journaling, spending some time with your own thoughts, getting them out onto paper and a therapist talking with somebody about the way you feel and, and the thoughts in your head or meditating to have that quiet space to analyze, you, you are not going to do, do much change in your life. Change does not happen without one of those, those things, right? Or some major catalyst, like a you know, massive heart attack or something, right? Sure. Um, yep. So I would say though, journaling, therapy. Okay meditation right as a way to like kind of make sure that your brain is is operating at a high level and all those things that come up every week or every month that are stressors on us we have some outlet to at least explore them you know one that that i'll share bob it was a nickname i had when i was a kid my my father gave me the nickname he used to call me boob tube because i sat in front of the tv all day uh because when i was a kid and visiting my father i didn't have anything else to do i didn't have any friends in that area and all that kind of stuff so i sat and i watched a lot of tv um and it's become part of my routine. That's how I unplug, I unwind, I escape into the, the box. I like to watch a movie uh, or watch some shows. And especially now we all binge like crazy. Not too long ago, Nita and I decided we wanted to make a difference. We wanted to make more of an impact in our lives. And we actually have changed what we watch. Doesn't mean we don't still go watch those fun movies. Doesn't mean we don't go watch those shows. Yet we're dedicating a specific number of hours every week to watching documentaries so that we can learn about things, so that we can take in something, because who knows what might impact us? Who knows what might hit us and touch us and we'll learn something from it, learn something about ourselves, learn something about someone that then we want to carry forward or learn something about an organization that we want to get involved with or help. So you want to make a difference in yourself. I'm not asking you to watch less TV. I'm just asking you to watch better TV. Ooh, I'm down with that. I right. love a good documentary. I love a good documentary. And Look, the reality is you should probably watch less TV. And, and, yeah. and you might consider filling that in by reading a book every now and then. Like, it, it, one of the things I love about working around Ben is there's never a shortage of recommendations of great books, right? Like, right. as I sit here, I've got Influenced by Robert Cialdini. I've got Which the we 40, did a whole series on already. That's yep. right. That's right. I've got the 48 Laws of Power here. I've got, you know, How I Built This. I've got, what, what else do I got up there? Tax-Free Wealth from Tom Wheelwright. We've had him as a guest in season one. Um, so I know yeah. somewhere on that bookshelf, Bob, you also have uh, achieve your apex, of course. Absolutely, bud. It's around here okay. somewhere. It doesn't, no, it's, it's sitting sideways up, up. It's so it's not actually between the book covers because there's no room <laughs> left up there. It's sitting sideways on top of the books now, but all right. So yeah, you're right. There are so many ways that we can make a difference or make an impact within ourselves, folks. We just gave you a few exercise, get outside, uh, hydrate by drinking more water journal, therapist, meditate, however you get with your thoughts, watch less TV or at least watch some better TV if you're going to watch it. Bob, let's go to that next level. Let's get outside of us and let's not be as selfish, even though folks, you got to be a little selfish, right? We've talked about that. Selfish is sometimes important. Next level would be our family. So Bob, let's go over some things that we could do to make a difference or make an impact in our family. You know, you and I batted these back and forth, and um, I there's one that I just love on here a lot, but it's it's it, which is share your own struggles as a learning environment inside of your family. And I was not raised like this, Chad. And I don't know if you were raised like this. I don't remember from my childhood, like one. I, I don't remember learning about the experiences of my parents as a as a, as a learning mechanism for me. Right? Like I don't right. remember stories that they told me of when they were my age, or like I just. And I think a lot of that is just that generation, right? They didn't, they weren't necessarily sharers. And then they wanted us as kids to think like that they were the parents and they knew everything and they had all the answers. And, and look, I, my, my wife was the one that opened me up to this. She's constantly telling me, listen, when you approach the boys and, you know, we talk about, I have a four to six year old and a 14 year old, but when you approach them, share with them, like some struggle they're going through that you went through and how did you handle it? And like, She's basically given me permission, my wife has, that I don't have to be perfect in front of my boys. Like, 
Right. I let, let, no, I was a human. I had struggles and, and look, sometimes I didn't even do a great job of dealing with them. But what I learned from that, I can, I can now impart to you. So I think that's a great one. Sharing yeah. your struggles, especially if you have kids, right. And, and helping them navigate those through lessons you already learned. Yeah. The only lesson I remember learning from my dad from him sharing doesn't mean he didn't teach me lessons that I had to yeah, self learn. Sure. My, my right. parents as well, but yeah, from them sharing. The lesson I remember from my dad was that you know, the path to school was uphill both ways and it was always covered in snow. So <laughs> everybody's a, parents had that same story. My parents definitely did. I know my grandma you know, used what, to say that all the time. One of my buddies growing up, he could never go out on a Friday night until a certain time because every Friday night, his family would spend quality time together and they did dinner on Friday. So it didn't matter if we were all going out to dinner on Friday as friends he would have to meet us later because it was a commitment that they had growing up, even when they were back from, from school, when they were adults, when the family all lived near each other, when they were all adults, they'd come together Friday night and always have that dinner together to spend that quality time to be able to have that time with your family. Folks, show your family they matter. That would be another one that would make the list for me. Bob. Love that. Love that, Chad. I look, you, you know, you're, you're a, a parent-free or a kid-free household now, so you and your wife have a lot of time. But, you know, I got two young kids. It's hard for me and my wife to find that special time. But, man, we have, for about the last two years now, I think every Thursday night we go to dinner, just me and my wife. We, um, one of our the grandparents comes and watches the boys, which is a total blessing for us to have that. Uh, but, yeah, it's made a big difference in, in just me and my wife staying connected and talking about the, the, you know, the stresses of the week and, and planning for what we have coming up with the kids next week and that quality time together. Really, like, Get it on your calendar, Chad, right? That kid, I don't know if he had a calendar back then, but like that, the family had a calendar and everybody was going to be there on Friday night. My wife and I have a calendar. We know from 5.30 to 8.30 every Thursday night, we're going to be at, at date night. Um, I love that one. I That's think awesome. That, and this kind of goes back to, like, you know, what my teacher did that made a difference in my life. But I think that in our, in our families, we can listen. We yes. Can be better listeners, right? I. I'm I'm as guilty of this chat as as anybody. My wife's helped me be become a better listener. I think not just with her, but with my boys. I'm one of those guys who's like, oh, you're telling me something. I'm gonna try to solve your problem. I'm like, oh, you're tell I got I can solve that problem, honey. Like, you don't even need to finish. I know the answer, right? And the reality is my wife didn't want me to solve her problem. She just wanted me to listen to, you know, to yeah. unload a little bit of that stress on, you know, on, into a safe space, right? Not have an answer always so man listen is one that sometimes i do it well right because of the lessons i've learned and the people like mrs robinson that have, have, have shown me how important that is sometimes i'm horrible at it still and, and i need to keep getting better right bob i don't want to be sexist or anything that's because you're a man right we fix that yeah, that's what we try anyway but, but there, like, yeah, we, we, gotta, did, right? we gotta learn that's not always the right path and i could probably make a bigger difference in some cases anyway if i just listen to quote a movie that I know you've probably seen, Bob, and this is what Nita and I say to each other all the time when we get into this situation is, I too have been thirsty, right? So uh, for those of you out there who don't get a white man can't jump, go watch it. You'll get the reference. She doesn't want, she doesn't want a glass of water. She doesn't want, want the glass of water. Yeah. She just wanted him to empathize that he too is listening and had been thirsty at some point, right? That's, um, a, great, that's a great movie. Bob, right. there's so many other things. You know, one of the ones that I think, uh, obviously, hug your family, love your family, right? Do that stuff with your family, encourage your family. I am who I am today because my mom, even though my mom will always say she didn't grow up with a lot of self-confidence, she insisted on instilling self-confidence in me. So as I grew up, everything, and, and it drives Nita crazy because, right, sometimes I think I'm a little too perfect because of it because mom made me feel just so good about myself internally that I was able to do a lot of the things I've done because of it. But the one thing I'll tell you to do with your family, Bob, you've given some great things with share your struggles and listen to them. The one I know Ben would say if he were here on this episode with us, teach your family, right? And that's why we even do things like the wealth series, the persuasion series, influence series that we did because we want to teach because those are conversations that our parents never had with us. So have these conversations with your kids. I know many of you have your kid in the car right now listening. Keep them involved in the conversation. All right, Bob, let's go to that next level. So we've done our, our internally, we've, we've helped make a difference in ourselves. We're helping to make a difference in our family. Let's go to our community, 
right? Let, let's help in our community a little bit. What comes to mind first and foremost when I say, Bob, let's make a difference in our community? Uh, there's so many ways to do this. You know, one of my favorites, I'm so like, as a, a boy dad, I, I just, I get to do this and it's all, you mean a girl dad and get to do this too, but I happen to be a boy dad, engage with local sports programs. I think it's mm. such, I had so many, you know, mentors growing up who were really just local dads, right. Who were willing to to get in there and give some of their time for, for some of the, some of these sports organizations, like in, in my area right now, if, if I don't show up, it doesn't happen. Right. So, right. I mean, some of you guys like, you, like literally you, you need to be showing up or these kids don't get to play soccer. Right. Or instead of having eight baseball teams, they have six because there's not enough coaches and the kids don't get quite as much interaction. Right. So I love the engage with local sports. Sometimes that's, you know, I, I, I give my time and I'm a coach. Sometimes that's I, I donate to, to it for the, the uniform. Sometimes it's like I buy the, the tickets to the kids. You know, they do the car washes to raise money or whatever. Right. But um, I. I really do believe in, look, it's, I played local sports as a, as a child, right? They were such a great environment for kids to learn so many life lessons. Um, I think that's a great way people can make a difference in our community. What do you got? Yeah, I, I got be a connector, right? Oh, I love and, that. Right? Who do you know that needs something or someone and who can you introduce them to, right? Can you become that person that says, oh, Bob needs a plumber and I got a great plumber or Bob's new to the area and I got this source of, per or I know this person's looking to just make friends and this is what they like to do. And I know people who like to do that. How can you be a connector in your community so that your community actually becomes a community? Because how many of us, and maybe COVID is partially responsible, yet how many of us don't even know our own neighbors, much less our community? And then how many of our communities came together during COVID uh, and helped each other. How many times did somebody who was elderly in the community, did other people bring groceries because they couldn't chance going to the store for them or things like that? Who can you connect in your community to someone else so that you can truly help develop relationships and build that community? Love it. Love it. I, I you, We got clean it up on here and I, I'm all about this one, right? Like just literally making my community look better, right? Is it you know, picking up the trash on my street or is it planting some some things out at the local park and look most of our communities if we decided to tap into it that these things are happening and we just kind of got to insert ourselves into them chad right i mean drive around yeah. my area on any saturday and there's somebody's out doing work in the community right and yep. um and we could absolutely make a difference that way I, you know we come out of a out of a world, Chad, the the Keller Williams world, where they do it as a big day, right? They call it Red Day. They have thousands of people around the country who come in, and they do all sorts of those kind of projects. Maybe it's like in some in some of the areas around here, it's some you know, it's some ninety year old lady that lives by herself in her house, and her house is like, and they'll go in and just transform that lady's home, right? And I think that that's a that's a great one. Um, what do shop you, local, Bob? You want to help yeah. your community? Shop there, right? Don't go to the forgive me, don't go to Starbucks to get your coffee, go to that local community coffee house, get your drink there, help the community grow by pouring more money back into the community, which helps people thrive within and continue to give back. We have this local toy store in our, just, just down the street. It's one of those, like they got all the cool old wooden toys and sure. it's very, um, I like the reality is I, I would never have to go to that toy store. Everything they have in that toy store, I'd get on Amazon. I could have it on my dot and my deck and you know, tomorrow, right. Or yep. maybe today, but I, I go to that toy store. Like I, I want to support that toy store. It's a big iconic kind of building here in town. And like, I I'll pay the extra 50 cents or a dollar or whatever, right over. Maybe I could have saved 50 cents on Amazon, but it, part of it's taking my boys there right? It's meeting the shop owner, the guy that runs the place. It's, it's, it's just, it's being in the community for me is, it's just as important to me as it is, you know, putting my money into my community, right? Yep. Yep. And I love the pay it forward concept, right? How many times have you gone to a drive through window and the car in front of you had just paid for yours? So you take your money and you pay for the car. Who knows what kind of effect that could have within your community? over the course of a day, who knows whose day you've just changed, whose happiness level you've just raised and how that can come back to the whole community. If we're talking with Ben right now, if he were here, he would tell us, go donate to the food bank, 
of your community. We know that that's a huge thing for him. And Bob, one more that came to my mind as we were just putting together some ideas is when you shop at Costco, right? And you go to buy a tube of toothpaste and you end up with like 70 of them, <laughs> go donate a few of those to like a homeless shelter or somebody on the side of the road that's just clearly homeless and give them some toothpaste or, or some of that stuff that you have too much of. Absolutely. You know, we, um, my wife and I, since, uh, and I'm going to pull this up because for some reason right now in my head is stuck Lydia's place, which is the place up in Bellingham that Ben does all this yep. stuff with, um, well, Mary's place. So we have a place here in Seattle called Mary's place and they're right down the street from our, from our house. But like, we know the lady in there now because my wife at like in the very beginning, they showed up in the building there. Aaron went down there and was like, Hey, what kind of stuff do you guys need here? And the lady's like, what? And she's like, we, what kind of stuff do you guys need? Like, we, well, I got a bunch of stuff that I'm about to donate. I'm curious if you guys might need any of that. Or, or and I'm also just curious, like on an ongoing basis. And she's like, we need diapers. We need, you know, the, the toiletries. Right. And so we, we take stuff down there every month. Um, but it was a, it was a decision to like go and, and find something in our community. It was really obvious because they kind of newly came to town. It was like new sign out of the building. We're like, Oh, what's this place? Um, so yeah, there's, there's so many ways to get involved in your community. It's just a matter of doing it. Right. Yep. All right, Bob, one more area. Then we're going to, you know, put an end to this one. How about making a difference or making an impact in our business, through our business, with our business, because almost everybody who listens to win may give is an entrepreneur or has that opportunity. We always have an opportunity to go become one. Bob, give me an idea of making a difference with, through our business. I think one of the biggest ways, Chad, is that we hold people accountable to their own goals. Oh, you took my favorite one. I know this is your favorite because it's like the half of what you do all week is holding people accountable <laughs> as their coach to their goals. Right. But I just, in our, in our, you know, what has Ben, Ben's got a few little quippy, you know, the lack of accounting leads to the lack of accountability, right? Inspect yep. what we expect. But at the very end of the day, most people in our business have goals. A lot of us, by the way, you don't know what your, the people in your business's goals even are. <laughs> so a good That's start true. might be learn what their goals are, right? But then helping hold them accountable to their own goals, not the goals you set for them, right? This is the thing they sat down at the beginning of the year and said, man, if this year is going to be a home run chat, I'm going to do all these things. Right. But, but checking in with them, being there, helping guide them, figuring out where they need help, where they've fallen short on their goals. How can you help them, you know, find a model or a system that would help them? Maybe it's, it's time blocking, Chad, or, you know, the, you're good at all the things, but um, holding them accountable to achieving their goals, I think is I a, think that's a great. Really big one. That's a great one, Bob. And, and I'm going to just give one here because I honestly think this one I'm going to give, I'm going to build a whole episode around. Right. right? And that's, Become a mentor to oh, somebody. I love it. Yeah, we could absolutely unpack this. Right. A whole that. episode on how do you become a mentor? What does a mentor do to help people reach a level? That is making an impact on somebody. What if you took someone and became a mentor to them in your business, right? They're growing a business or they're within your business and might become the person that replaces you as you grow yourself up and out, whatever that's going to be. Use your business, become a mentor. Now, could you just be a mentor in life to people? Sure. You could go find a young teenager who needs some help and doesn't have the guidance the way a teacher gave you kind of that voice. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but becoming a mentor to somebody, that's a way to make a huge impact or a difference in someone's life, Bob. All right, Chad. This is pretty okay. good little first run here coming back and, and, and reintroducing ourselves to the, to the Win, Make, Give audience. Yeah, Bob, we've talked about making a difference. Yeah. We've talked about making an impact. What was the third one that we said in there? We want to make more money. All right, so how about we come back on our next episode and not doing a full-on wealth series. We're going to wait for Ben to do the full-on wealth series. Yet how about we come back on our next episode and talk about some ways that you could easily make some more money. You up for that? Yeah, I'm, I'm up for that. Yeah. All right, folks, make sure you are subscribed to Win, Make, Give so that you don't miss that episode when it shows up. So you don't miss the interviews that we have have coming for you for people who are making a difference making an impact and are going to help you make more money we don't want you to miss a single episode and make sure you join us in our facebook group win make give until our next episode on behalf of bob on behalf of dave hiding behind the scenes on behalf of ben as always do good <laughs>